That's how you get ants. Clearly, the top three animated Disney movies go like this. Number one, Sword in the Stone. Number two, Robin Hood with the foxes and that chicken lady in waiting who ends up with a football scene. Number three, uh, I don't know, let's say Frozen. How is it that Disney Animation is the only company to create a Robin Hood movie that has withstood the test of time? There's the one from 1991 where Uma Thurman played Maid Marian. I'd never even heard of that one. You're so handsome when you're angry. The Ridley Scott one from 2010. Until lambs become lions. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, and of course, the one I haven't mentioned yet because I'm building to it as the topic of today's episode, Robin Hood. Of course it is. 2018's Robin Hood with Taron Egerton and Jamie Foxx. It's hard to cover new Robin Hood ground. I mean, rewind this video 15 seconds and you'll see why. This time around, director Otto Bratwurst, I'm sorry, I mean Bathurst, wanted to turn the swashbuckling hero into a superhero movie, likely to compete with Marvel's and DC's box office domination. Now, before you scoff too hard, let's be fair. Robin Hood and Batman are very similar characters. Rich Lord slash Playboy trains to become the best at a particular set of skills, dons a costume, and fights corruption by seeking a very particular kind of vengeance. In this version, it opens with Marion attempting to steal a horse for her neighbor whose horse just died. Without being able to plow his field, the man will lose his livelihood. Robin of Loxley has so many horses, one missing won't be that big of a deal. He catches her, of course, and falls for her heart of gold. They're all in love and junk until Robin is drafted to the Crusades by the Sheriff of Nottingham. I mean, I assume the Sheriff drafted him simply to steal his assets. We inexplicably get a long scene of Robin in Arabia. His unit is ambushed. He breaks off to snipe the machine gunner who has them pinned down. One of the men is captured and used for bait. Robin has a heroic no man left behind mentality, leads everyone into an ambush, is almost killed by Jamie Foxx's character to be saved by Guy of Gisborne, who cuts off Foxx's hand and captures him. Back at their camp, the English are ordered to execute their prisoners. They haul up Foxx's son and Robin tries to stop the execution. They hold Robin back and killed the kid anyway. Then Robin breaks the chains and frees all of the Muslims inside his own camp to kill his countrymen. <sighs> There's a good chance I may have committed some light treason. Okay, I mean that's treason, like not light treason. Five seconds ago, this dude was choking you out and you're just like, okay, cool, kill my unit who I was just willing to sacrifice myself for. Well, there are nice things to say about this movie. This one is not an easy one for me to get behind. Robin is shipped back to England, apparently not in chains with a sign on his back that says big old traitor. He gets back home to find his manor in ruins, his assets seized by the sheriff, everyone thinking he's dead, and Marion shacked up with the dude from Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, sorry, Jamie Dornan. That's on your resume now. I'm not sure you can ever live that down. The beard doesn't hide it. For some reason, Nottingham is turned into Isengard from Lord of the Rings. With it belching fire and precarious wooden walkways everywhere, it's a shame, really, because most of the sets and locations are beautiful. Loxley Manor was really beautiful. Even if these things are anachronistic, they add an element of the fantastical. And while I'm on the good stuff, there's a completely anachronistic wardrobe, but it was awesome. I loved it. I was totally on board with the costume design. So Robin heads out to Isengard slash Nottingham. The sheriff, played amazingly by Ben Mendelsohn, who has become like bad guy actor number one in Hollywood, is giving a speech about the importance of collecting taxes for the war effort. Okay. Well, I mean, I understand the dangers of overdoing it on the military industrial complex, but this is a pretty big shift from the Robin Hood legend. Like, we just saw Robin spend four years in a war where his men were outgunned and outmatched. I don't really care what your stance on the Crusades are now. At the time, most people thought this war had a just cause. Assigning current feeling to it doesn't really suit the time period. Additionally, the sheriff talks about how the Muslims would come to Nottingham if they could and kill and murder and steal, which obviously is rhetoric, but they show that it has never worked on the citizens, so why was the sheriff using that rhetoric? 
Further, Robin hooks up with Fox, starts wearing a Muslim face covering when murder killing any guard he sees using the recurve bow, a weapon used by the Muslims he was fighting, and using the quick draw tactics taught him by a Muslim soldier. He proves the sheriff's point, but for some reason the sheriff never points this out to turn the people against Robin Hood. He's literally emulating the thing the sheriff has been using to oppress them and the sheriff never uses it back. The worst part of this movie is the confused, forced, nonsensical political message. Guys, Occupy Wall Street was less than 10 years before this movie. Hatred for the rich being greedy is universal. Are you trying to act like people aren't carrying around to eat the rich posters at every large gathering of people? In the film, Robin even talks about redistribution of wealth. There was no need to tie war coffers into this. You could have just left it at the rich or greedy. It's a universal theme. Why did you try to make this some kind of weird political message that doesn't follow to its own conclusion? This could be called the Cynics Robin Hood. The closest thing to a joke is Fox saying his name is Iahe Ibn Imar, but he can call him by the English version, John. Oh my God, guys, this means he's little John in this version. Spoiler! There are some fancy training montages, some great action scenes. Robin of Loxley comes back from the dead and tries to ingratiate himself with the sheriff at the same time he's doing all the hood stuff. It's a great move. It drives home the comparison with Batman. Batman has the philandering facade and the Bruce Wayne identity that could get him on the ground level with some of the very corruption Batman is fighting against. Robin as the hood murders the crap out of anyone who gets in his way. So he's less traditional Batman and more Zack Snyder's Batman. At the end, there's a big heist where all the people start a riot. Christian Grey sees Marion Mackin on Robin, so he gives up on life and ends up burning his face with the homemade bombs. Robin goes back to save him and sees all the people getting killed. Now it's convenient to the plot for Robin to have PTSD, so he starts to have crusade flashbacks as all the peasants are dying. He gives himself up. The sheriff brings Robin inside. John has infiltrated the guards and together they kill everyone, have a one-liner with the sheriff, which I'm sure was scathing, and John hangs the sheriff. They escape to Sherwood. The Cardinal promotes burned face Christian Grey to sheriff. Like, why would the Cardinal do it and not the King? Or, I'm just going with every other interpretation of Robin Hood here. Prince John? Anyway, Fifty Shades of Sheriff is now giving the same type of speech that the old sheriff was, which is a complete reversal of his For the People character. Robin sees it and fires an arrow through the wanted poster Dorn in his holding. Roll credits, promise of a sequel. It's not hard to see why this one failed. Before this movie, I thought Jamie Foxx was an okay actor, but he is acting the hell out of this movie. He was the most enjoyable character in the film. Taron Edgerton lacked charm as Robin Hood, but it sort of felt like he was kept on a tight leash. He's played very charming before, and funny. He's turning into one of the more competent actors of the new generation. If allowed to run with this role, I think he really could have made it his own. Mendelssohn was not given enough room to chew the scenery. We're doing this one before Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, which had Alan Rickman as the sheriff. That man could chew his way through a scene better than Eric Carle's The Very Hungry Caterpillar. I'm not ashamed of that reference. That's it then. Cancel the kitchen scraps for lepers and orphans. No more merciful beheadings. And call off Christmas. If you're looking for a cynical yet incompetent indictment of the Iraq war dressed up in Robin Hood clothing, this is the film for you. If you're looking for a cynical yet competent indictment of war, stick to MASH. If you're looking for a fun, jaunty, sometimes cheesy Robin Hood fix, try the first three seasons of the BBC series. Bonus, consistent British accents. That's all for this episode of Anything Nice to Say. Oodle lolly and never be ashamed to like what you like. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Head over to Patreon to subscribe for exclusive content, early releases, and to get your name in the credits. My book, Live Like Legends, is available now wherever books are sold. If you have a movie about which you would like me to find anything nice to say, drop it in the comments.